Welcome back. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Let's take a look at the markets, crypto, Bitcoin stocks, and see what we can expect going into this weekend. Uh, markets had a green day today across the board, up 1.7% on the Dow, S&P up 2.47%, and the NASDAQ up 3.3%. Good day for the NASDAQ. Nice little rebound day. And in bear markets, you get nice bounces like this. So the last couple of days have reversed several days of downward pressure. And what, what was the catalyst? Why did we see such a bounce? Uh, it was mainly because of the Fed uh, favorite inflation index um, rose less than expected. So any kind of a positive headline, the markets are going to have nice little knee-jerk reactions. Any type of uh, negative comments or uh, news, the markets are going to have the opposite reaction, knee-jerk to the downside. So this is giving the markets, you know, why would the markets bounce on an inflation index rising 4.9% instead of 5.3% uh, or 5.2% uh, as expected? Because there's a uh, thesis out there or a narrative out there by some fund managers that are thinking that the Fed might pause their tightening if inflation tapers and several people uh, economists as well as in investment analysts, uh, fund managers are thinking and saying that inflation has peaked right now and that it's going to roll over. The question is, uh, if it has peaked, um, how long will the peak last? How long will it take to subside? How long will it take to roll over? So anyways, any positive news, you're going to get a nice little bounce out of the markets. Uh, next up, we have jobs report next week. We've got FOMC. Um, meeting, the minutes came out the other day, did not have any negative uh, surprises in it. So the markets kind of bounced on that a little bit. Uh, so we'll have to see the next meeting. The Fed's obviously going to raise another 50 basis points. There's people in the market that, uh, or analysts and, and economists that, uh, mostly analysts and fund managers that think the Fed may not raise rates, or they might only raise 25 basis points instead of 50. Uh, but the Fed is going to raise uh, rates 50 basis points, we'll start hearing more commentary out of the Fed. A couple of Fed members said that they might be able to ease off if inflation is down. But until uh, that gets under control, the Fed is not pulling the foot off the gas. They want demand destruction. They want to see what's happening, which earnings are down. Uh, we're starting to see some layoffs. You know, The job market needs to correct a little bit. And housing is starting to correct all across the country. We're seeing reports about uh, mortgage applications down, price reductions across the board. Uh, days on market going up, inventory levels rising, doubling in some markets. So uh, it's still way below uh, where it needs to be, but it's starting to correct a little bit. So uh, it's going to take some time to work its way through the system. There's different schools of thought on the Fed and what they're going to do. And as we know, until the Fed either stops or reverses course, the markets are going to continue to work their way down and find a bottom. A lot of people are calling bottoms right now in the markets, calling bottoms in crypto. And unfortunately, we just are not there yet until the Fed uh, says we're there. And that's your buy signal, that's your bottom indicator. Once the Fed pulls the foot off the gas uh, or puts the foot back on the gas, I guess I should say, pulls the foot off the gas of tightening, puts the foot back on the gas of easing, meaning they're not raising interest rates, they're not doing any more tightening, things like that. Uh, then it'll be bull market back on in all asset classes. So let's take a look at what's going on. <clears throat> we'll cover the markets here real quick. You can see a nice little uh, update here the last few days, one, two, three, four days in a row for the Dow off this wick low. That's an 8% rebound on the Dow in about a week, which is pretty significant. Uh, same thing for S&P, about 10.4 point. Uh, that was a NASDAQ 10.47%, S&P 9%. And as you can see, you're going to get these kind of bounces as the market continues to work its way down. You know, another lower high, lower than the last, um, you know, lower highs that we had. So right now, lower highs, lower lows. So we'll just have to wait and see how this all levels out while the market continues to work its way down, find the bottom. The dollar still dipping a little bit, oil up a little bit on the day silver and gold up a little bit off of this decline here. So let's take a look at Bitcoin and you can see Bitcoin still continues to work its way sideways and down, uh, continuing to set lower lows uh, as it works its way down in this tight little range. And most of the expectations are that this level is going to break and Bitcoin is going to go down and test some, some more downside here. And let's just take a look at what we have 
in terms of what Bitcoin is doing. You can see now it's taken out this last low of last year. And in case you're wondering what Memorial Day weekend looks like for Bitcoin, that was right here last year, uh, May 31st. Uh, let's go back here. Here we go. May 31st of 2021. This the 30th, 31st uh, were up days, Sunday, Monday. So here was basically if the 31st was Monday, Sunday, Saturday, Friday, Thursday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday were down, Sunday, Monday were up. Uh, and then you can see it just kind of worked its way around. So not really any uh, of any significance other than uh, stock markets are closed, traditional markets are closed, uh, Bitcoin trades 24 seven, but it does close price action out um, every day. So that's how these closes get printed. And as you can see, it's just continuing to test this region. If this level breaks that we're at right now, um, Bitcoin will go down. The next stop is about that 23,000 level where there was a little bit of support. Then you're back down to the 20,000 level. So the question is, will it go down? Check this 23,000, then the 20,000. That's what everybody's waiting to see. And if you go through and look at Bitcoin's history, uh, we've already looked at a couple of things. Um, we've been looking at a couple of things here. And one is obviously our moving averages. Let's take a look at where they are uh, on the weekly timeline. So here's the weekly uh, 50, 100, 200 week moving average. And we've been tracking this. Whenever price loses the 100 week, it goes down to test and sometimes break below that 200 week moving average pretty much every time in its history. Uh, it's gone on to do that. So the question is, where does that 200 week moving average come in at if and when that happens in this, you know, moving average cross occurs just like it did here, which actually when the moving cross actually occurred uh, in 2017, let's go to log scale here so we can see a little better. Uh, this was 2017, 2018. That kind of marked, you know, the bottom was in and Bitcoin was already on the upswing by the time that cross happened. Um, and 2014, kind of the same situation. Bottom was already in and then it was just more upside from that standpoint uh, when Bitcoin recovered back up. So the question is, where is this 200 week going to come in? Let's take it off a of log scale, try to get an idea, you know, potentially around that 23, 24,000. So there's a lot of consistency around that level where price kind of consolidated around the 20, uh, 23, $24,000 level on the weekly. There's not much support till the 20, but when you go back to the daily uh, and look at the daily, you've got a little bit of this price action right in here around that 23, 24,000 on the daily, didn't really show up in the weekly. So let's take a look at the monthly and see what that looks like uh, on the monthly. We'll take these moving averages off and let's take a look at um, another indicator, the MACD. On the monthly MACD, you have this cross to the downside and that always um, indicates a longer term, you know, bear cycle bottom back in 2017, 2018. You can see it here and it was several months, one, two, three, four, five months after the cross on the MACD before it reversed and came back to the upside. So generally you're gonna have about five months of downside when that MACD crosses on the monthly before you get more upside right now, Bitcoin is two months in. So that's another indicator to kind of, kind of keep an eye on. And another little thing here too, so there are uh, some indications here on the Gaussian channel still hasn't turned red on the weekly yet. Um, and of course, the last time 2017, 2018 price action was below the mid level and had just gotten into the lower, uh, lower level when it turned red still hasn't turned red on the weekly yet pretty interesting. Um, I know it's turned red on the five day but not on the weekly right now. So it'll be interesting to see how this all shakes out and what that turns into on the Gaussian channel. But one of the other uh, narratives in the market out there is that Bitcoin never saw. So a lot of people say, you know, or we're saying that we just can't be in a bear market because we never had a, you know, Bitcoin never had a blow off top, you know, this, that, and the other, never had a parabolic run. Uh, and, you know, when you look on the daily uh, on Bitcoin and traditional markets, I mean, that's as parabolic as it gets. You had a couple little breaks on the way, but these are parabolic moves and you had several blow off tops along the way with your ultimate blow off top. But this is all parabolic when you look at it on the daily. I mean, that's about as parabolic as it gets. That was a 20x on Bitcoin right there. Uh, when you look at it on the weekly, that's even more evident parabolic run here. Uh, and then, you know, even on the monthly, even more just straight up, straight down. So 
you know, it doesn't have to have a parabolic, you know, run with a with a distinct blow off top top like a lot of people are pointing to back here in 2017, 2018. And even that wasn't even clean. It had a couple of, you know, stops along the way. Uh, it was just more direct. And of course, price action was a lot lower back here. That's a $20,000 top. But again, it was still very significant running from, you know, 3000 to 20000 This time you ran from, you know, basically three, 4000 to 60000 So that's pretty parabolic, if you ask me, in terms of what's going on there. Now, the other big consideration to look at here, too, is the, uh, you know, altcoin market. A lot of altcoins are, you know, falling off the cliff and, you know, setting up to face another big potential reset 60 70 percent down from where we're at right now which would ultimately bring them back down you know 90 plus percent back to where they were before this whole run started uh in 2021 and same thing uh same thing with bitcoin so if we take a look at averages in terms of you know the down side for bitcoin in its history it's always been around 85 percent plus or minus that bitcoin has dropped in a bear market on average throughout its history. So from the peak, so if you take the recent top and you drop that 80 to 85%, the 85% puts you around 10,000, 75% puts you around that you know 20,000, and then 60, 65% puts it around that $24,000 mark. And if we go back in Bitcoin's history again, 2017, 2018, the bottom was a it was about 83, 84%. If you go back to 2013, 2014, the bottom was again 86%. And then if you go back to 2011 and look at that initial run, the bottom came in at 94%. So to to look at you know current Bitcoin prices. Um, and to not expect it to run somewhere like in the past, uh, you know, I mean, it doesn't have to do what it did in the past, but it's just, it is what it is and it is what it has done. And right now, Bitcoin from this peak is down. The wick low was 63%. So the question is, will it go 85% down? And that's pretty low. That puts it back to about 12,000, puts it back into that pre-pandemic run, that 10 to $12,000 level, which is where a lot of the altcoins are headed. Let's take a look at Ethereum. Ethereum is at its last line of defense here, last line of support. Next stop is down here around this 13, 12 to 1300 level. If it loses that, then Ethereum potentially gets back to the 650, uh, $460 level. And again, Ethereum, if you go back in the history of Ethereum and look at what it's done in the past, basically 94% drop in 2017, 2018. And most altcoins have experienced that. So let's take a look at where that puts Ethereum right now, 94% drop is right around two, three hundred dollars. So you know, calling around, you know, three, four hundred dollars is about where uh, that could potentially end up. Avalanche, same thing. Avalanche is working its way back down. What's 90, 94, 95 percent off of that puts Avalanche around nine, ten dollars. You know, eight, nine, ten dollars somewhere in that range back to where it was before this whole 2021 run-up. Same thing with Solana. Uh, if you go down 94% on Solana, then that puts it around $12. So a lot of people look at these prices that these coins went to and think, man, you know, $42 is cheap when Solana was 264 at some point, uh, you know, and what you really have to look at is, you know, it came from two, you know, $2, uh, you know, all the way to that point. Now you're looking at $42. So potentially you could still lose 99% of value from that point. So if we kind of, you know, just take a look at what that, what that really means right now, if Solana was to lose 99% of its value from here, then you would be, you know, right at a dollar, you know, 90, 90 cents. So, I mean, that's just the reality of the situation for a lot of these altcoins is they can still lose 80, 90% of their value from where they're at. And, you know, past bear markets, they've all lost around 90% of their value, 95% of their value. So let's take it, uh, let's take a look at Maddox back to, you know, 80 cents, Cardano, you know, back to pennies again, if you go down 90, 95%, uh, you know, 18 cents back to these, you know, pre-pandemic run-ups. So that's kind of what we're watching on a lot of these coins. Um, 
in terms of where we're at with the total crypto market cap, kind of the same thing when you go back and, you know, go back and look at it, the entire crypto, you know, altcoin market cap dropped 90 to 93% in 2018, 2019. So, you know, by all indications, that is potentially what could happen right now. Um, not saying that it will, not saying that it has to, it's just, uh, you know, looking at historical price action and what it's done and what the expectations really are. So, you know, as I said before, the real question is, when does this all end? When do we find bottom? And when is it going to be bull market on again? And right now, it's still risk off. These are risky assets. It's like venture capital. Uh, you know, Bitcoin, Bitcoin is one thing. Uh, Bitcoin is, you know, obviously uh, a different investment thesis, a different investment product, and a different uh, risk profile than Ethereum and the altcoins. To me, Bitcoin is like property. It's like real estate. Ethereum is the internet uh, where things are built upon and then the rest are just venture capital. So that's the way I kind of look at things. And a lot of venture capital deals go bust and they all go through their cycles. So right now we're just in that de-risk, uh, deleveraging liquidation cycle. Everybody's liquidating. Everything's liquidating, putting cash on the sideline, getting ready for the next bull run. Everything has to reset. But the good news is that's where your opportunities are going to come in. So you don't want to get left behind. You don't want to be without resources to take advantage of the next bull run. So just watch for that, be prepared for that. And, you know, uh, anything can happen, but it's pretty unlikely and unreasonable to expect a massive, massive rally bull run like we've seen without the Fed completely pivoting and tremendous amounts of capital coming into the space when the bulk of it has exited because a lot of the smaller players have lost all their money, you know, with Terra, with all these other um, situations that have happened just with the drawdown of where it's at. A lot of people, people have watched their portfolios basically evaporate. Um, a lot of the institutions aren't here yet because we don't have the full regulatory environment yet, still waiting on that. Uh, we don't have spot products yet. Don't know if we ever will. I know there's a lot of uh, people out there that think a spot Bitcoin uh, ETF is coming, uh, but those things would definitely create some big bounces, some big rallies. So any news like that, uh, could potentially present a big rally. And then, of course, you have the Ethereum move to proof of stake coming. You know, that can be a buy the rumor, sell the news event. So uh, could see a nice little pump in Ethereum. But again, until the entire macro economic cycle changes, we get resolution to the conflict in Ukraine, the war in Ukraine. Uh, we get an answer to China's lockdowns and supply chain constraints open back up. The uh, labor market corrects, the housing market corrects. And um, the Fed decides what they're going to do. Uh, we just can't really expect bull market on. This is a different market. It's a different cycle. Uh, a lot of participants have never seen a macro bear market because it's just been uh, easy monetary policy since 2008 and 9, our last bear market cycle. Uh, so all traditional markets have been in a massive bear market since 2008 and 9 with quantitative easing with the Fed put zero interest rate environment, low interest rate environment. Anytime the Fed has tried to reverse, we end up in this situation. This time they have no choice because of inflation. They have to get inflation under control. So your big indicators of bottom in bull market on is inflation dropping, labor market correcting somewhat. So, you know, demand destruction where housing corrects, uh, labor markets correct, prices correct. And the Fed says, we don't need to do any more. That's gonna be your indication that um, we're going to reverse this cycle and it'll be off to the races and bull market on. So keep an eye on those indicators. I will be here to keep you posted and uh, help you take advantage of that opportunity. So these are the things I'm looking at. Uh, have a, a fantastic Memorial Day weekend and I will see you in the next video.